Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? I'm trying to, um, I was trying to follow it on my iPad as well, but it looks like it's at 90 degrees. Can you just say, is it the right way round for you, please? Morning everyone, can you just say, is the picture the right way around for you, please? Yes, okay, brilliant, thanks. Morning David, great. Good morning everyone, lovely to see you, great to see you clocking in. I thought I'd um, just try and uh, have an, an iPad going at the same time so that I could see your comments and um, hopefully I could respond in the prayers if you wanted to type something up. So. I hope that you're well this morning. I hope that you've um, woken up to this beautiful day and um, rejoiced in the gift of it. hope that it started well for you this morning. Um, hopefully you've all got sight of an order of service. If you, um, if you haven't, don't worry. I'm sure you can just join in as and when. Um, but it's lovely if you, if you do have one, that's great. So... Um, going to invite us just to turn to those orders of service so we've got everything um, sorted out and I'm just going to begin um, in singing. Um, it's lovely to be here in the garden. I thought as next week we're going to be back in church it would be good to, to just have the beauty of outside um, for this week. So um, won't be quite the same sound as it is in church, but I'm just going to sing Lord Jesus Christ. So if you know this, then please do join in where you are. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one with us, Mary's son, cleansing souls from all their sin, pouring your love and goodness in. Jesus, our love for you we sing, living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, now and every day, teach us how to pray. Oh. 
remembrance, Lord of you, into our lives your power breaks through, living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us, born as one of us, Mary's son, led out to die on Calvary, risen from death to set us free, living Lord Jesus, help us see, you are Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, I would come to you. Live my life for you, Son of God. All your commands I know are true. Your many gifts will make me new. Into my life your power breaks through. Living wherever we are in church or in the garden, in our homes we gather together to worship God. And so, welcome to this gathering place. Friend and stranger, saint and sinner, together we gather here. With hope or hesitation, with joy or yearning, come, all who hunger and thirst for life in all its fullness. Generous God and generous Saviour, touch us through your Spirit. The Lord be with you. We pray together. O oh, merciful God and full of grace, as we come into your presence, may we remove, like outdoor clothes, all pretense, all show, all arrogance. May our inner self be revealed, humble, honest, open, and longing to be changed by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we come before God, we come and set ourselves straight with him as we confess together. We are in the presence of God who knows us as we are. God forgives and renews. So we say together, we need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us, others escape us, some we cannot face. We confess that we have failed your call in us. Forgive us, Lord. Open our hearts to hear your word to us and set us free to serve you. Amen. So may God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. If you'd like to turn with me, if you're able, to the new sheet. We pray together. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So 
The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they've watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that's set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. And those of you who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells within you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to God. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. So before our gospel reading, let's sing together the Gloria and we'll sing that, um, that first version, the You Are the King of Glory. You are the King of Glory. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Lord of heaven and earth. You're the sign of righteousness. Angels bow down before you, worship and adore for you have the words of eternal life. You are Jesus Christ the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Glory in the highest heaven for Jesus the Messiah reigns. And so hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great clouds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, 
since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That's what's sown on the path. As for what's sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet that person has no root but endures only for a while. When trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the word and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case a hundredfold, in another case sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Lord, may the words that I speak and the words that are heard be true to him who is our living word, even Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm very excited to share with you these um, fruits of my gardening labour. Please don't laugh, people who are very experienced gardeners. Um, these peas and beans represent a great delight to me. Um, I've really, really enjoyed growing them and now they're at the stage where I can eat them, which is also very enjoyable. I really have enjoyed the process that largely has gone on despite me. But there has been some input that they've needed from me. And actually, especially this year, there's been a need to water in those dry spells that we've had. There's been a need to tie in the, um, the plants as the winds have been quite strong. And there's been a need to weed around the plants. It's not that I've done it. It's not that it's happened on its own. There's been a kind of partnership between us. And I know lots of you are really keen gardeners, brilliant at growing vegetables, and you'll kind of get some of this. But if it's not vegetables, flowers too, there's a joy in the partnership of gardening. Something about there being something at the end that there wasn't. Something about that kind of creative um, coming together. That's very pleasing. One of the Old Testament pictures of God is as a gardener. And we hear a little bit of that in the reading from Isaiah this morning where it says, um, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return and, until they've produced a harvest, there's that sense in which God is fulfilling part of what's needed for the growth, the seed to sprout, and indeed the harvest of righteousness that's referred to in other places. It goes back right from the Garden of Eden, but also Jesus joins in with that and there's that beautiful passage in John's gospel where Jesus says I'm the true vine but my father is the gardener that's sort of um, underlying that underlining that message that God is the the gardener and God desires just as this um, very meager kind of harvest illustrates God desires a, a fruitfulness and a prosperity for the world. There's those lovely words in Isaiah, isn't there, about um, how the mountains shall, 
does it say? It says, the mountains and the hills shall burst into song. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. There's a sort of desire of God for prosperity and peace and joy. Um, the prosperity in the right sense, not about lots of money, but about us flourishing and the, the world being a place of joy and thanksgiving. But it's not just all about um, receiving it with joy. There's the work that goes on in between, isn't there, that God is involved in. There's the nurturing of the growth. There's the weeding and the pruning that brings about the justice and the freedom and the wholeness and the beauty. And I think Jesus understood and continued that. And he said, didn't he, abide in me and you will bear much fruit. So in other words, stick with me and this will be the consequence. And the fruit that Jesus is talking about is not about the, the peas and the beans, it's about those fruits of the spirit that are referenced um, by Paul when he writes to the church at Galatia, the, um, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, the faithfulness, the self-control, I always think when we read those fruit, actually that really is what would be good for us as people and for the world. And of course, fruit is affected by the soil, isn't it? The, um, what do the French call it? Terroir? But when they're talking about the vines, they talk about the soil being really, really important. Um, I had a quick kind of rummage for my soil. Actually, this is feeling a little bit dry and flaky now. I think it needs a little bit of um, stuff dug into it, a bit of fertiliser. Um, but that's another part of the process, isn't it? The gardener and the seed and the soil. They're all important for the growth and the fruit. And in this parable of the, the sower or parable of the soils, we are the soil. I used to have a, a spiritual director who was a nun, Sister Stephanie. She was great. She was an American woman. She had so much life and vitality. She was absolutely lovely to visit. Um, and she used to say, oh, rocky ground today, Lord, rocky ground. And I think there is that sense in which actually each and every day we can be a different kind of soil. Sometimes we feel really, don't we, like the, the path that Jesus is talking about. Um, do you know this? In, in Palestine, the, the fields were just thin strips. That's how they were tended. And then you walked between the strips on a, a path and it got really trodden down like concrete, really. And it was very difficult for anything to grow in it. That's the path that Jesus talks about. And I think sometimes we as soil can feel very much like that. We're trampled down and we're hard. Um, all those other things, the rocky things, the cares of the world, the, the weeds and the things that strangle it, we can relate to those, can't we? I think at different times we are all of those different soils. And of course what we want to be is the fertile soil. And I wonder what it takes for us to be that fertile soil to enable good growth. I wonder if it's something about us being... Um, fertilized and also about us being broken up a bit. That's not necessarily a comfortable thing to experience but maybe that's necessary for us to be fertile is to have that sense of being ploughed up and broken so that we can be more fertile. Lest we should think that it's all down to us, let's not forget it's God who is the gardener. And just as when you've got your uh, vegetable bed or your flower bed and the weeds are growing up and choking the flowers, actually it's the gardener, isn't it, that intervenes to make a more fertile soil.
remembering that God's purpose is prosperity and goodness and shalom and justice. God will keep gardening, will keep tending his earth, his peoples, whatever the soil looks like. You think if you've got a plot, it's nice isn't it actually if you have a plot that's a bit has been a bit kind of neglected and then you really get to grips with it. I wonder if God feels like that about us sometimes. Oh come on let's let's sort this, let's get a good soil going, let's get some really good growth happening here. God won't give up on us. The reason I read those three readings was that lovely line in Romans that says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We often read that as um, no condemnation as in no negative judgment but I wonder if it also means that sense you know if a, a house is condemned or a factory is condemned it's it's given up isn't it you know there's no hope for it it's condemned and it's uh, knocked down but I wonder if that's part of this sense there's no condemnation there's no sense God's not giving up there is always hope God's got you God is on your side God will definitely prune where there's ego where there's selfishness where there's racism where there's greed God will root those things out because God is interested in that resilient growth, not just for you and I as individuals, but for the world. God is the gardener and works in partnership with us in the soil to produce that fruit for the world. Let's be ready to be that fertile ground today. Can I invite you to join with me again in the collect, but remembering this time that God, the almighty God, we pray, is God the gardener. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit. Kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's affirm, shall we, together our faith. God loved the world so much he gave his only son. He came and lived among us, and we beheld his glory. He offered us fullness of life and destroyed the death that defeats us. God loved the world so much he sent his spirit, coming like fire to all people and all ages, celebrating difference, creating unity, the agent of change among us. God loves the world so much, he calls us to be the church, the body of Christ in the world, witnesses of his love and power. So I wonder in this um, live stream, if we might be able to type some prayer requests and um, share together with those. So if you're able to type, then please do, and I'll try and include those in the prayers as we go. So let's come before God as we pray together. Gardening God, we thank you that you are interested in growth and fruitfulness. 
we pray for your people around the world. We pray that we might each be good soil, even today. We pray that we might share the fruits you grow in us for the good of the world. Gardening God, we thank you that you purpose good for the whole world. Nurture and encourage all those in trouble around the world. Strengthen those who care for one another and carry one another's burdens. Those who work hard for justice and peace. And Lord, we remember all those who are affected by COVID-19 all around the world, particularly in places that help is difficult to find. Lord, we pray for those who are poorly this morning. We pray especially for Tessa's mum, Ada, who's very ill in hospital. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to support us and forgive us when we struggle to get along with others. We continue to remember the people of Leicester and Leicestershire, especially for those who are frustrated at the lockdown. We pray for all students in both primary and secondary schools those who are struggling to make provision for the new year. We pray for those who are seeking asylum in the UK, those who hope to find a place of peace here and indeed a place to be fruitful. Gardening God, we thank you that you never give up on us. We thank you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Lord, we pray for those who despair today. We pray that you will bring a fresh hope. We pray for all who grieve, who are recently bereaved. Especially we remember the family of Maurice Small. We ask that you'll give them joy in one another and strength to meet the days to come. And Lord, as we thank you for this technology, we pray for all who are not able to share in these services online. Lord, we thank you that you are with us online or offline, in our gardens, in our churches, in our front rooms or in our pyjamas. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of our lives and for the joy of the fellowship between us. We do pray as we come to meet together next week for your wisdom and your guidance as we prepare to be as safe as we can. Lord, please help each of us to play our part as we hold this, our benefice, before you. And in the silence now, we bring before God the thoughts and prayers of our own hearts. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's very lovely. Hear the bells of Kegworth Church in the background just as we're talking about going into the building next Sunday.
so it will be Belton not here but that's a lovely reminder of the the church buildings but we don't forget that we are the church and indeed we are the body of Christ in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life the peace of the Lord be always with you So we gather in thanksgiving to remember Christ and the body that we are part of and the body we share. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. We say together, through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and make us a people for your own possession to you be glory and praise forever therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Accept through him 
our great High Priest, this our sacrifice, our thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed in love for us all. Amen. And so, united around Christ's table with all who stand before God in earth and heaven, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So now may the blessing of our gardening God, who desires only prosperity and peace and love for you. May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We say together, God the sender, send us. God the sent, come with us. God the strengthener of those who go, empower us, that we might speak your name and share your love. Amen. Well, it's lovely to be together and it will be a treat to be in Belton Church. Sorry, I realise that if you're watching this from Brazil or um, New Zealand, as I know some people do, that's not much consolation. Um, but next week we, we will be having our first benefit service in Belton Church at 10.30 and we will be able to have communion just in one kind in the bread. Um, Louise and I are going to meet this week and just work with the wardens in Belton to make sure that everybody is as safe as they can be. Um, please do pray for that service. Um, it will be absolutely wonderful to meet together and we need to not be fearful, but we will need to be careful. So I'd encourage you to come, but please do um, come with care. I can see lots of comments going on, so perhaps I should look on my, um, my machine. Um, 
thank you so much for being here. Please do continue to, to chat with one another and feel very welcome to come next week. Be lovely to see you, be great to be able to share together. And of course, morning prayer continues. Sorry, I should say that service will, will be live streamed as well. We're not giving up on the live streaming. It's just um, a, a permission now to be together for services that we want to um, fulfill. So yeah, it's not the end of live streaming. Please don't, don't fear that and we will continue live streaming morning prayer as well so we'll see um, we'll see each other this week in morning prayer um, let me just see if there's anything i need to respond to here okay i'm going to just go out of shot leave you to enjoy the garden a little bit and um, communicate with one another. Please do go well and um, look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.